Hey Monpo, this is Davy with your Canon Challenge for Week 7. Week 7 introduces us to the New York School. The New York School is often considered to be some combination of the poets Frank O'Hara, John Ashbery, Barbara Guest, Kenneth Koch, and James Schuyler, writing most substantively in the 1950s and 1960s. The New York School is often spoken about in generations, with John Ashbery and Frank O'Hara being probably the most widely known figures of the first generation of the New York School. Reading the New York School poets, you might consider what makes a quintessential New York School poem. O'Hara's I Do This, I Do That, and the documentation of non-disabled white gay life in New York in the 1950s and 1960s is often held up as exemplary. Consider, for example, a stanza from the poem The Day Lady Died. And for Mike, I just stroll into the Park Lane liquor store and ask for a bottle of Strega. And then I go back where I came from to 6th Avenue and the tobacconist in the Zigfield Theater and casually ask for a carton of Galois and a carton of Picayune and a New York Post with her face on it. In our approach to the New York School, the majority of the poets in this week take the anecdotal, autobiographical, and urban documentarian impulse of the New York School and apply it to many different contexts, seeking to contribute to the style associated with the New York School while reconsidering and resisting its normative expectations of gender, race, and ability. We include a number of challenges to the homogeneity of the New York School. Schuyler's window poems that challenge the ableism of the act of just walking around, guests' associative dreamscapes, Mayer's insistence in invasion of the body snatchers that feminized labor in a domestic scene of caring for a baby in a rural landscape can be the scene of an I do this, I do that poem. Here's a few lines. The time for dinner is too early now. The time for sunset comes too soon. The time between dinner and Marie's bedtime is too long. When it's time to go to bed, there's still a few hours left to read. I'm dreaming twice as much as before. I spend all my new time lying in bed thinking. You might also track a kind of aloofness or distance in the observations of New York School poets. Consider, for example, O'Hara's A Step Away From Them or Schuyler's observations from his window in February. We also have two contemporary poets' responses to Frank O'Hara, Hanif Abdurraqib's USA v. Cuba and Patrick Rosal's Uptown Ode that ends on an ode to the machete, which give us a contemporary framework for continuing to question the whiteness and upper middle class point of view offered by O'Hara's writing. In addition to the poems in the main syllabus, look to Modpo Plus for more takes on the New York School from our main syllabus poets, as well as poems by Anne Lauterbach, Eileen Miles, Alice Notley, John Yao, and others engaged with participating in, expanding, and critiquing the legacy of the New York School.